Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Barrett. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1921. This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 7. Things to Remember. In using your thought power for the production of new conditions. 1. Be sure to know exactly what conditions you wish to produce. Then weigh carefully what further results the accomplishment of your desire will lead to. 2. By letting your thought dwell upon a mental picture, you are concentrating the creative action of spirit in the center, where its forces are equally balanced. 3. Visualizing brings your objective mind into a state of equilibrium, which enables you to consciously direct the flow of spirit to a definitely recognized purpose. And to carefully guard your thoughts from including a flow in the opposite direction. 4. You must always bear in mind that you are dealing with a wonderful potential energy, which is not yet differentiated into any particular form, and that by the action of your mind. You can differentiate it into any specific form that you will. Your picture assists you to keep your mind fixed on the fact that the inflow of this creative energy is taking place. Also, by your mental picture, you are determining the direction you wish the sensitive creative power to take, and by doing this, you make the externalization of your picture a certainty. 5. Remember when you are visualizing properly that there is no strenuous effort to hold your thought forms in place. Strenuous effort defeats your purpose and suggests the consciousness of an adverse force to be fought against and this creates conditions adverse to your picture. 6. By holding your picture in a cheerful frame of mind, you shut out all thoughts that would disperse or dissipate the spiritual nucleus of your picture. Because the law is creative in its action, your picture desire is certain of accomplishment. 7. The seventh and great thing to remember in visualizing is that you are making a mental picture for the purpose of determining the quality you are giving to the previously undifferentiated substance and energy rather than to arrange the specific circumstances for its manifestation. That is the work of creative power itself. It will build its own forms of expression quite naturally, if you will allow it, and save you a great deal of needless anxiety. What you really want is expansion in a certain direction, whether of health, wealth, or what not, and so long as you get it, as you surely will, if you confidently hold to your picture, what does it matter whether it reaches by some channel which you thought you could count upon, or through some other of whose existence you had no idea? You are concentrating energy of a particular kind for a particular purpose. Keep this in mind and let specific details take care of themselves, and never mention what you are doing to anyone. Remember always that nature, from her clearly visible surface to her most arcane depths, is one vast storehouse of light and good entirely devoted to your individual use. Your conscious oneness with the great whole is the secret of success, and when once you have fathomed this, you can enjoy your possession of the whole, or a part of it, at will, because by your recognition you have made it, and can increasingly make it, yours. Never forget that every physical thing, whether for you or against you, was a sustained thought before it was a thing. Thought, as thought, is neither good nor bad, it is creative action and always takes physical form. Therefore, the thoughts you dwell upon become the things you possess or do not possess. A man came to me telling me how he longed to marry a certain young woman, but felt he could not afford to as his salary was small, and work uncertain. I spoke the word of ever-present certain, unlimited supply, and explained that love knows no failure. It is yours to enjoy. See yourself in the kind of a home you both want. Do your part, keep on loving the girl, and believe absolutely in that which lives and loves in you. A few months later they both came to my study looking radiantly happy. I knew they were married. The wife said to me, Dear Mrs. Behrend, we are very happy because we now know how to use our thought power and hold our consciousness as one, with all we want. So be yourself and enjoy life in your own divine way. Do not fear to be your true self, for everything you want, wants you. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.